What is this in chat? Don't encourage me? What what kind of what kind of advice is that? That seems harsh. Come on. VP of the universe. That's right. So tonight it's summer watermelon punch because summer is finally here. If you're not from Seattle, our summer does not start on Memorial Day. It does not start on the summer solstice. It starts on July 5th, right after it rains on July 4th. All right, so we're going to do two things tonight. Uh, one is I actually want to record a video uh, of the magic loop. So I may go through it a couple times to get a good take for my editing crew. Because that's like the main thing we teach here. And I think it should be the featured video on my YouTube. Uh, we still have Dr. Rack and Yellow up there. And he's a good guy. But we haven't done the virus update in a while. So <clears throat> what is the magic loop? The magic loop is one of the most important things we do on this channel besides resume review and LinkedIn profile review. The magic loop is a systematic way to grow in your career no matter where you are. It's designed around corporate America where you have a boss. So I'm going to refer a lot to your manager or your boss. But it's five simple steps, and they're very simple, uh, that you can repeat in a loop in order to grow throughout your career. So what are those five steps? And then we'll go into each of them in a little bit of detail. The five steps are simply do your current job well. Then, once you're doing your current job well, ask your boss what else you can do to help. Once your boss tells you something, go do it. After you do that, go back to your boss and say, hey, I'm interested in XYZ, whatever it is you want to grow in. Is there a way I can help you in the team that will also teach me that skill or grow that ability? And then go do that. And just repeat the last two parts. Do something. Ask if you can do something will help you grow. Do it well. Ask again. Do it well. Ask again. That is the whole loop. If you do that, you will grow in your career. Now, why? Everybody wants to know why. Because bosses rarely get offered help. Um, you think you're doing your job, and you are. But how often do you personally, we can ask in chat right now, how often do you personally go ask your boss what you can do to help him or her? And if you tell me it's a whole lot, be honest and say, is that because I've told you to do it or you did it before you ever heard of this channel? Because I have a bunch of managers who show up here and people rarely do it. It's not just me. Um, and T Weirdo, I believe, um, awesome, awesome now kind of works for me. So he asks me all the time. Roxio, we're going to talk about your problem in a second. Um, and Renee follows the channel. But we're going to talk about this problem of I don't want more work. Well, um, that's, there's a way out of that. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about when I went over the magic loop. Shadow Fox is definitely doing it a lot now. Um, <clears throat> Ha, huh. Guru, Guru 22, that's awesome. I took a five-hour recurring weekly item off the team lead sprint because I could tell it was annoying him. The next day I got a promotion, I wish. Well, it often doesn't happen that fast. But uh, Danny Mac, uh, who works with me at Amazon, is exactly right. That's what we're going to talk about. Prioritization is key to not taking on more work. So we are going to talk about that. But let me go through each step in a little more depth. So number one, do your job well. Why does this matter? Because if you're not doing your job well, then you're a problem for me, not an asset. And the help I want from you, if you come to me and say, how can you help, is stop screwing things up. Do your regular job well so I don't have to worry about you and chase around after you wondering if you screwed something up or if it's going to come back to bite us, or wondering if you're doing your job. So if you want your boss to help you, you need to first be doing a competent job. This is not hard, though. You go to your boss, and once you think you're doing your job well, you go to your boss, and you say, Boss, I've been trying really hard to do a good job here. How am I doing? 
then whatever they say, say thank you. If they say good things, you can go to step two. If they don't, you need to go fix what they're talking about. And yes, in a minute, we'll cover the people um, who think their boss is only ever going to dog on them and is never going to give them good feedback and is always going to load more work on them. Uh, those bosses exist, but they're rare. And the reason is bosses need help. They want help. And still thank them. Yes, chat says. Okay. Um, so once you're doing your current responsibilities well, uh, then you go ask your boss, how can, how can I help? And managers love this because they always have a worry list and no one ever takes their worries off. Their boss gives them new worries. They need someone who can help them with their worries. So if you go in and ask how they can help, believe me, managers are motivated to come up with something. Now, someone earlier said they don't want to do more work. Well, first thing, bad news. If you don't want to do somewhat more work for a little while, and possibly more challenging work, then you actually don't want to grow in your career. That can be cool if you are happy with what you're doing and you want to do it either forever or for a while without change. I have very little advice for you. Go enjoy your life. Um, this is a channel about how to grow your career. And sadly, that is not completely free. It takes some effort. It doesn't always take longer hours, though. And we'll get to that. So you go ask how you can help. They give you something, you do it. Now, it's key. You got to do what you get asked. You, if you're not willing to do what you're asked within reason, um, you're better off not asking. Because just play it out in your own mind. If someone comes up to you and says, Fred, how can I help you? And Fred says, oh, I really need someone to go to the store and get bananas. And you say, oh, well. Actually, I meant like, how could I help you that's easy and doesn't require me to go anywhere or actually get off this couch? So I'm not going to go get bananas. Fred's now, it's interesting. Fred wasn't angry with you before, but now Fred is disappointed and has a lower opinion of you. So don't ask if you're not willing to do. Um, so caveat. If they ask you, hey, Fred, that's awesome. Please invent cold fusion. It is okay to say, I really want to help with that and I'm willing to work hard, but I'm actually not a physicist and I've been led to believe that cold fusion is not possible. So I really do want to help. Who can help me understand how we're going to go about building cold fusion? Because I can't do it alone, but I will work. Just give me some guidance. You can totally say that to your boss. You can say, I need some help. Um, and, uh, as long as you put in the effort and you're transparent, again, unless you have a jerk boss, they're going to be reasonable because it doesn't help me again. Selfishness always works. And what I mean by that is your boss is selfish. It's not in their best interest to assign you something you cannot actually do. Why is that, Ethan? Don't bosses like to torture people? Well, yes, we do, but we get enough of that pleasure as a side effect. We don't actually have to do extra work to enjoy that, that glee that comes naturally from seeing you fail. No, more seriously, um, why this works is if I assign you something you can't do, I don't get anything more done. In fact, you stop doing what you were doing and you start thrashing on something you're no good at. I not only don't get what I need done, I don't get anything from you done at all. And I probably disillusion you. So there's a lot of selfish reasons for me to try to give you work you can do. All right, moving on to step four. After you do this and your boss is like, oh, good job. You then can ask, hey, I have this career goal. I would like to be promoted. I would like to earn a promotion. I would like to make more money. I would like to become a manager. I would like whatever. I would like to earn your trust to only to work four 10 hour days and not five eight hour days. I would like to be able to work from home. Not that we don't all do that now, but as an example, um, what kind of project could you give me that would help me grow my executive presentation skills, my project planning skills, my legal document review skills, my fill in the blank that I need to move towards this career goal? 
is there a project you need that I could help with that lets me do that? Um, and your boss, because you've done good work for them, because you've helped them, is very likely to say, well, yes, I can have you do this. Or, you know, actually, if you want to grow into that, here's a different project. But they generally will be motivated to help you. Again, why? Well, managers like me need people who are more capable. And we want to reward motivation. We want to reward extra effort. We want to see people grow because, again, selfishness always works. The more capable you are as a member of my team, the more work, hard work, I can give you, which means the less I have to do myself. Your career opportunity is my relaxation opportunity, or, and we'll get to this in a minute, my opportunity to then go volunteer to my boss to take his hard work so I can also grow. So this is synergistic. You want your boss running the magic loop upwards also. Finally, uh, step five, really easy, um, repeat. You don't need to go beyond that. So that's the basic magic loop. I'm going to take a minute to look at chat here. Do you really want your boss's hard work? Uh, Danny knows my boss. Sometimes, sometimes not. But you got to be careful what you ask for. That's why you ask in line with your career goals. You don't just go and say, what's the hardest thing you have on your plate? Can I take it off? Unless you're willing to do it, in which case you'll be a hero. And I'm sure, Danny, if you went and asked our mutual boss that, you would get some very hard work and you would make him very happy. All right. Um, so let's talk about some of the problems. Somebody in chat earlier said they don't like, they, they don't ask these questions because they don't want more work. So one of the questions I've thought about, and I keep referring over here to a document I've written on this. Um, can the, if I keep volunteering for work, won't I just end up overloaded? So I get to where I'm doing my job and then I take some extra work and I do it. Well, there are two answers to this. If you keep taking extra work, it seems like ultimately you'll become overloaded. But number one, if the work is project work, this is fine. You take a little bit of work, you do the project, it's over, you're done. You can take a new piece of work, do that, you're done. So with project work, as long as you do it at a reasonable pace, you will not increase your total amount of work. Ah, but someone else in chat said, I took on a five hour task and it was a recurring task. Well, now they're out five hours. Maybe they're smarter and they can do it faster. So it takes them three hours. Anyway, they're out three hours. What do you do? Well, remember, if this system is working right, you're earning your boss's trust he or she believes you are highly motivated, believes that you're growing in your career, believes that you are trying to help them. So what you do is you go to your boss and you say, you know, boss, I've really enjoyed working on project A and delivering thing B and helping you with your challenge with whatever. But I'm running out of time. And so I've thought about my work and right now, as you know, I'm responsible for running across campus every day to go to the mailroom for us and to pick up office supplies. And what I was thinking is, I'm doing some stuff that's pretty valuable for you. I think that's what you've told me. Could someone else take that on? Could someone else do the mailroom and supply run so that I have more time to help you? Now, look. That's an easy ask. You're basically, though, let's be clear what you're doing. I'm not going to hide it. You're saying, take this low value work that's not challenging to me and give it to somebody else so I can do more of the challenging things that are on your plate. This is a great system. The work that isn't interesting to you gets moved to somebody else and you get to do work that's interesting to you. Now, you might wonder, why would the boss do that? Well, selfishness again, let me tell you. I have 200 team members. Some bosses have more, some have fewer. One of them, you, is helping me. Most of them, 
are innocently sitting at their desks doing their job probably, but not actively impressing me with their willingness to help me. If you want to get rid of some work, I have 199 victims. I mean options. And it's in my self-interest to increase your bandwidth to help me. So I will probably do it. Now, important, you want your boss to do this. If you're really handing off kind of, I I used running to the mailroom and getting supplies because it's kind of shit work. And I wanted to be clear, you want your boss to reassign that because you don't want to be the one putting it on someone else. Now, as Danny Mac has said, the more common positive way is it's called job rotation. We're going to move this task around, but let your boss do the moving. Now, sometimes you can delegate to others. The other thing Danny said that's true, it's about prioritization. I've talked on this channel before. Most people have lots of work they're simply never going to get to. Uh, I have tasks every day. I get more emails every day than I reply to. Um, The last time I looked at my inbox at Amazon, it had 8,000 emails in it. Some of them are a couple years old. I'm never going to get to them. Clearly, I kind of meant to or I would have deleted them, but I didn't. So that all that work is never going to happen. So the key is you can actually, unless you tell me that every piece of work you get, um, every piece of work you get, you completely finish. You never drop something and just nobody ever asks about it again. It's about how to choose carefully. And so you choose the right work to drop off your plate. Bottom line is summarizing. There's ways out of the more work problem. One, prioritize. Do the most important work and just don't drop anything super critical. Number two, delegate. Either hand it to somebody else who agrees to accept it or hand it, get your boss to hand it to somebody else. Um, And three, do project work that ends. Now, this is important. Um, uh, We're going to talk about when to ask for a promotion, Duke. It's it's in the question list, and I totally want to hit it up. Um, But that caused me to lose my chain of thought about getting rid of... Oh, this is important. If you're mid-career, remember your crappy work that you're bored with, that you want to get rid of, is someone else's opportunity to step up. So what you want to do is look for a situation where you're mentoring someone, you're leading people. You don't have to be a manager to lead people. It can be win-win. The piece of work that I no longer find challenging and don't want to do anymore because I'm bored with it and I've done it 10 times may be totally new for one of the people reporting to me who sees it as a chance to broaden their skills and get better at something and to impress someone. So I can actually take work off my plate that I see as a burden. In my view, this is a bag of shit. Hand it to someone else, and in their legitimate view, they're like, this is great. Look what I'm being trusted with. And that's because there are level and experience differences. Now, this isn't always true. Sometimes a bag of poop really is a bag of poop. And everybody knows. But sometimes that's not true. It's in the eye of the beholder. So, all right. Sweet. We've covered that. Um, I'm going to switch over and look at questions. Let's see what we got here. Have people voted? Have they done their job? All right, so everybody wants to know this. We're going to start taking questions for the mods. How early is too early to start pushing for a promotion? Now, I happen to know the person who submitted this, and I agreed to answer it on stream. So up into the chair, and here we go. Um, I'm all about this. How early is too early to start? And I told them I have to answer this on stream because it depends on so much. It depends on, did someone above you quit or fail? Is there a gap? Um, How fast do people get promoted in your workplace? How much have you delivered? Were you hired at too low of a level? And no, it's not just your opinion you were. You have some kind of evidence. What's your relationship with your boss? And finally, how do you define the word push? So that's a lot of words. 
Here's what I would say simplistically. Number one, have you delivered some value? I wouldn't ask about moving up in any way until I had done something good. Now, I know the person in question has done some good work. Okay, so then they've done good work. Have you had a conversation about what does the next level look like? Hey, boss. Hey, manager. As you know, I care a lot about our company and I really want to do a good job. I also want to grow in my career. Can you tell me what it would look like to move up here? Now, smart managers will know right away what you're after. It's not like you have to ask or push. They get the message super quickly. Oh, you're interested in moving up. You don't have to like beat them over the head with a frying pan yet. Get a description of their expectations. Then, either right then or in a little while when you think you're meeting those expectations or you've delivered something else good, you can ask and say, hey boss, remember when we talked about my desire to move up and you described what it would look like? I think I'm doing that. Am I? Right? Or if that phrasing is too weak for you, not, not strong enough, you can say, look, I'm working hard as I understood your description. I'm delivering value equivalent to this level. I would like to be promoted. How could we go about that? Always we, by the way, not you. Or how could I earn that? Or have I think I've earned that? So those are the questions you ask. And for the question of how early, as soon as you've delivered some value in your current workplace, you should reasonably ask for an understanding of how to grow in your career and what promotion looks like where you're at. Very appropriate to do something worthwhile and then ask. Not ask for a promotion, but ask so you understand. And then as soon as you start getting close to that, you want to start asking and saying, look, I know I've been here two years. I'd like to be a senior software engineer. As I understand it, that requires designing at least one system, being a part of at least one release, mentoring at least one person. I've done all those things, uh, mentoring at least one new hire. What would I need to do? Is there anything else I must do? Uh, or can we move ahead with my promotion? Or if you don't like opening the door that way, you say, I would like to be promoted. Where do you see me standing on that? But you ask those questions. Getting all the way back to the person, and I see there's a couple of questions in chat. Getting all the way back to the person I know who asked this, I don't know where you are in that cycle. Um, but you start pushing when you're not getting answers or where the answers start to ring of bullshit, where you just sort of are getting an ongoing list that keeps changing. Well, uh, or, or that contains something impossible. Like, you know, Ethan, we totally believe you are ready for promotion. There's just one more thing you need to do. You need to be taller. Okay. Like when you start seeing things like that. So, Danny is writing in, in chat, doing a good job. What is the gap analysis between my current skills and the next level? That's like very, you know, five head um, formulation of the question for corporate America. You don't have to be that formal, but it's directionally exactly correct. Um, that's because your boss wants to see you in heels. <laughs> I do sometimes wear cowboy boots. I haven't in a while. Um, I was told I intimidate people when I'm 6'4 rather than 6'2. I think I intimidate them at 6'2, so I didn't figure it mattered. All right. Um, so I think I've answered that. If the person who asked me has follow-up questions or wants to share details of their circumstances, they can do that for me in Discord. Um, you do sometimes have to be really explicit. Danny is bringing out. You may sometimes have to say, look, I want to be promoted. Honestly, I am going to look elsewhere if we can't get the specifics about what's blocking me because I know my skills are valuable. I've told this story before. Um, I was 
early at Amazon, I came in, one of my peers who I thought was not particularly stronger than I was, was promoted to director from senior manager. So I went to my boss and I said, look, I'm interested in moving up. My career is reasonably very important to me. And so I would like to understand if I have, if you share that importance in my career progression, because if you don't, I have to look for a place that does. And so without being, I chose my words slightly differently than that. Like I'm not doing a great job reconstructing them on the fly, but I basically said, my career is very important to me and I need to know my potential to progress that career here because I intend to progress. I said something that made clear that I wanted to do it right where I was, but I was willing to look around and, you know, son of a gun, I was promoted in the next cycle, the next review. Oh, and DT Twitch Talk asks, on this topic, what about promotion cycles? Different companies, yes, this is a first, important. Big companies have promotion cycles. They only look at promotion certain times. Amazon used to do it twice a year. Now it does it four times a year. Some other companies may only do it once a year or whatever. Some companies do it as often as monthly, so you can be promoted any given month. The reason they limit it is overhead. They don't want managers being nagged every month. They only have so much HR bandwidth, so they like to batch them up. Um, second, it is possible to get an exception to that cycle. It's usually more of a pain in the ass than it's worth, both for you and for your manager who needs to be your advocate. So unless you have a really good case or unless your company is something really long, like annual only, I wouldn't wait for that. At Amazon, where it's a quarter, if someone's like, can't you do it sooner? I'd be like, get a grip. It's, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. Uh, be slightly patient. And I would be annoyed by someone asking me to go faster than three months. Um, okay. What else do I have to add to this? That's a lot. I think it's good. Um, but promotion cycle. Oh, know your company's promotion cycle. And another great question, if your company has promotion cycles, ask them, hey, when do you think I'll be ready? Based on other people like me you've seen and what you believe I need to do, when is the soonest we can work together for me to be ready? Or when do you believe I'll be ready? One of the things we're doing in my team is we're actually, as managers, we're assigning a target promotion quarter to every single employee. We're doing it so that we have a sense. It's not a guarantee. If we say Fred is three quarters out, it doesn't mean Fred's guaranteed a promotion in three quarters. Instead, it means we're thinking about Fred and uh, we think his path will get him there in three quarters. And we're trying to make that happen. It's important for you all to hear that. We're actually trying to make that happen. Why? Why should we care? Fred lives, Fred dies, Fred stays, Fred quits. Fred, he's dead. Why do we care? Again, selfishness. Think through your manager's own selfishness, even if they're a very loving, generous, kind person like moi. Even a loving, generous person like moi still has a tiny bit of selfishness that comes through. And if I can grow you and promote you, my team is stronger and more capable, and I have less work to do. Or I can take the time that's been freed for me and go to my boss and apply the magic loop and say, boss, how can I help you? How can I take on something that lets me grow? And moi, I am happy. And when I am happy, I try to make all my peasants happy. That's what you're shooting for. So trust in the selfishness of your boss. All right, and think it through. Okay, uh, the, the stream crapped out. <clears throat> oh, it's just Fred's failed, got it. Okay, uh-oh, and the mic too. Let's go on, next question. What to ask to someone you want to connect with? We've covered this before. Um, why am I either a victim or a peasant? You can step up, Kval. you can be a hero. There was an option earlier in chat to be a hero also. Maybe that's why I choose the name F. It's F for Fred. All right. So the next question was, what to ask someone you want to connect with? Well, honestly, anything you actually care about that's relevant to their background. So don't ask just 
I know some of you struggle with this, but you don't actually have to get through life by lying and being disingenuous. It's not actually necessary. You can truly just ask honest questions you care about. And if you connect with someone, you just look for anything common in your background. And you say, look, um, I see we both went to this school. Or it seems like you lived in Ohio, because that's where I'm from uh, originally. I lived in Ohio too, blah, blah, blah. Do you like this sports team? Anyway, I'd like to connect with you. I see you're interested in. I saw the article you posted. I saw the video you did. I see we share a connection in Jane jo Jane Johnson. How do you know Jane? Anyway, I'd love to connect with you. You really, like anything that establishes similarity, humans are wired for connection. Um, yeah, see, Kval, I also escaped from Ohio. That is a very good start. I see you're from Ohio. I got out too. Isn't that funny? Whatever. Um, you don't need some magic question. You need a legit question that shows, this is the important part, that you're already connected and all you're asking to do is formalize it with a LinkedIn link. I see we both worked at IBM. I see we both went to Penn State. I see we both are from Ohio. I see we both like shirts. I see that you have also eaten food. You just need something that creates connection. Let's see, someone in chat says, um, if you think you have a connection, ask someone you know to do a warm intro. That's also very good advice. Don't connect in them at all. Have someone else introduce you. Works incredibly well. If you have a common connection on LinkedIn, you just, you ask, uh, you want to meet Jane, you already know Joan, and you say, Joan, I'm really interested in connecting with Jane. I haven't been able to get a response by just reaching out. Would you introduce me to Jane? I want to ask her about what it was like to escape from Ohio or fill in the blank. Works 99% of the time. So, all right, cool. So that one's really easy. Danana! Good to see you here. Danana makes all our emotes. So if you enjoy our emotes, thank Danana. We haven't used everything from the emote list today. But uh, what? What do we have here? We have definitely done some mind-blown big, big brain answers earlier. Uh, thanks to Danny putting them in chat. All right, next question. Do you believe you should have a high quality network over having a high number of connections you don't know well. The whole point of it is to leverage your network. So how can you if you don't even know them personally? So this is a good question. At first, I was very stingy with who I connected to in LinkedIn. Um, but eventually, so many people were reaching out to me from the channel, I decided, and from my post, I decided to just accept nearly everyone unless they were obviously trying to sell me something I didn't want. So I've been on both sides of this fence. I think if you're not trying to be any kind of public figure, you can keep your connections to people you know at some level. But actually, the advantage of connecting to everyone is those people, some of you, for example, in this channel, I don't know you as well as you know me, in the sense that you listen to me and have heard hours of me talk, but I only know you through your limited chat comments or maybe you just lurk. So I accept those connections because you read an article from me, you follow me, uh, you've watched my videos, whatever. My thought is if I ever need you, um, I can reach out to you because you work at a company I'm interested in or I'm looking for a lead or I'm trying to hire somebody. Remember, you chose to connect to me, now we're connected. You already signaled that you're invested in me at least a little bit. I didn't force you to connect. In fact, you're the one who connected to me in this case. So you're probably going to at least respond to what I have to say, probably. Um, if someone accepts you as a connection, you can send them a LinkedIn message directly to their messages without any intermediary. And that's usually all you need. You send them a short email that says, hey, I'm looking for a job. I do this. I live in Des Moines, but I'm trying to get out of Des Moines. Do you have a job for a designer? Or do you, do you have any leads on a job for a designer? 
most people, yes, no, no response. What's the difference? Um, humans are wired for connectivity. And the second part of this question really answers the question. The whole point of it is to leverage your network. So how can you if you don't even know them personally? I don't know. How well do you have to know someone to ask them if they know a job lead or if they're hiring? Like, you just need to be connected. And again, have that little bit that says, I really want to leave Des Moines. I see you're in my dream destination of Poughkeepsie. Are you hiring in Poughkeepsie? Do you know anyone who is? I'd really appreciate your help. Super easy. So I would connect almost anyone. Yeah, the new cold call opening line. Ethan helped you too, so let's chat. Totally. Uh, feel free to network off my profile. Do not feel free to ask me to introduce you to people. It's not that I'm mean, it's that I'm busy. Okay, uh, next question. How do I apply the magic loop if doing the basic job is consuming most of my time, energy, and mental capacity to do well? How can I get from step one to step two? Okay, fair question. First, you may have to temporarily work some overtime. So life is sometimes not fair and is hard. You may have to work some overtime. You may have to earn some of your boss's trust so that you can then get your boss's help in getting rid of some of your other work. That's one answer. The second answer is I would ask your boss, I would say, hey, I want to help with some things around here. I find that I'm super busy. Am I focused on the right things? Are there any things that are lesser value to you than things you need? So you can actually set up this trade in advance and say, I put in the time to figure out where my time is going. And I want to take five minutes to show it to you to see if I'm spending my time on your most important work. Because sometimes the boss will be like, you know what? That and that, eh, I'd rather you do this and this. So bosses aren't, we all imagine, let me, let me help you out. This will make you some, for those of you who like to lie, cheat, steal, and be lazy, this is going to be a gift. For those of you who want to advance in your career, this will also be a gift. Your boss and I have more or less no effing idea how you spend your time or what you do. We have an imagination of it. If we like you and you produce good results, we imagine good things. If you don't produce good results, we imagine that you're sneaking off and doing drugs in the bathroom or similar. Okay? We have vivid imaginations that are only loosely coupled to reality. The point, truthfully, is we may not know where your time is being consumed or we may have ways to speed that up or move it around or help you with it. If you come to us and say, look, I'd like to do more of high value. I feel like I'm very busy with some low value work. Um, am I doing the right things? And is there any way I could be more efficient? Uh, you can totally get help with that. Why? Everybody in chat, I've explained why like 10 times. Why is the why your boss is going to bother to help you? You're going to get me to rant if somebody has an answer. Yes. PMA Dota, thank you for saving me a rant. Selfishness is right, Renee. PMA Dota, because in some way it helps them too. Yes. If you're doing work I don't care about or you're doing it badly and slowly in a way that I can show you how to do it better, I'm going to benefit. If you're doing work that either isn't that important or that I can help you speed up, it is in my selfish best interest to do that because then you can do more for me. Never underestimate the power of your boss being interested in what's good for me. It's just human nature. Because as we said earlier, a person like I am really very kind and generous and I have a very limited amount of self-interest. But sometimes still that tiny seed of self-interest can be leveraged to your advantage. So go ahead. All right. Um... Very good. And Sean, it's good to see you here. Sean, one, two, three. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, I have to do an advertisement. Uh, I'm working on scheduling this, but Awesome, who's one of our channel VIPs and helps me with slides sometimes when we do slides, he introduced me to the coolest guy who I talked to this morning. We're going to have him on the channel as a guest. 
This guy is an Olympic silver medalist. He was on the Olympic team for 12 years. He went to multiple Olympics. He competed in all kinds of world championships. Um, He's very uh, accomplished, and I'm really looking forward. He's going to come on our channel um, and help. uh, Well, Duke, show me your medals, buddy. Um, Be careful. Silver is excellent on a world stage. Um, I sure as hell don't have any. What sport? Speed skating. Which, hey, that is, you know, turn fast, go left. Uh, <clears throat> so, bottom line is, he also went to Stanford. Uh, so, this guy's pretty smart. And I'm looking forward to talking to him. I'm looking forward uh, to, well, I already talked to him. I'm uh, looking forward to having him on channel to share with you how he got. Um, don't forget to mention your school. Yeah, I, I, uh, yes, Kellogg. Um, <clears throat> so this guy's done some TED Talks. He'll be a good presenter. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get him on as soon as Friday. He's a little bit hard to, to get him to respond to email. So, but we're going to try and do uh, Friday morning, actually. So with that, um, we're on it. Okay, next, yeah. Difference between silver and gold. Actually, one of the things he talks about in his TED Talk about time, he has a TED Talk about time. You can look this guy up. His name's John Coyle. Um, uh, Yeah, awesome. So um, if you want to try and see, he and I taught, well, John K. Coyle, yes. Um, It would be convenient to do this like 9 a.m. Pacific time, Friday, 11, his time, if he can do it. So I emailed him and said, could you do Friday? He hasn't gotten back to me. Maybe you ask him and say, hey, uh, we were talking about you on our channel um, tonight. Ethan was talking about you, and he was hoping you could do 9 a.m. Friday, 11 a.m. Central. Right. So it'll be an unusual morning show, but I would love to have him on. Uh, he's He was talking about, however, that in, I think, the 2012 Olympics, which was after his time, The difference between first place and 10th place was uh, 0.3 of a second. So, oh, thank you for the tier one sub, five o'clock. So literally, he said, that's 10 people. Between the first clap and the second, that's 10 people going by the line. So that's gold, silver, bronze, and seven people you will never hear of again unbelievable so anyway how did i get on that um selfishness and motivation and where we're going to have someone on who's going to talk about high performance okay next question this is good you guys have voted on some stuff and you've asked some good questions and whether or not we're able to schedule john for friday uh we will definitely have shows next week we have shows both monday and wednesday And on Monday, I have a special treat for you. I've arranged for uh, a woman who currently works at the Career Center at Carnegie Mellon's uh, Entertainment Technology Center. Her name is Susan Timko, but she's also run career centers or worked at them at large public colleges and small private universities. And so we're going to talk to her about how to use your college career center to get the most out of job hunting and that's whether you're still there or you've left i know a lot of you are in college or near college how can you use that to build your network and to find the best job so i'll have her on monday at six um question is writing content on linkedin worth the effort does it actually generate useful leads for oh my god really i can't even finish this question so someone was just commenting um ah phooey they were commenting on a black screen. No, they weren't. I just have to bring. So that's about the magic loop and the stuff I wrote. But if we go to my profile, I don't write that often. I do one post a week. Um, this is just the random traffic I have happen to have right now, right? I have 4,000 people who viewed my uh, profile recently. My last post got 2,300 views. Um, I've appeared in 700 searches. This is normally weekly. Yes, it generates tons of incoming. Um, and uh, 
The other thing I'll say about this to make it super simple, I've learned the easiest things to write. Um, let's see if we can see. I commented on this post. Let's go look at it. Shivang is one of our mods. He does our podcast. Uh, he's been here on the channel and been interviewed before. Um, he did this post about passing the AWS certification. Um, he posted, he just posted legitimate good news about himself. He didn't have to write anything fancy. He just said, look, I did this thing. It was fun. It was cool. These are some people who helped me. He called me out, which is why I was linked. But the key to about this post, you can have your own opinion of it. There's nothing in here except he says, I'm really excited to announce I took this and scored well. Guess what? As of a few days ago, this post, because I've talked to him about it, surpassed 100,000 views. It had 1,800 people like it, 176 people have commented on it, and all he did was post about being excited about something in his life. I did a post, some of you saw it maybe a year ago, I did a post where I said, I got this patent, I think this patent is pretty cool, and I linked the patent I got for flying drones back and forth off a rolling truck to cover a neighborhood as the truck moved through for package delivery. I just said, man, I'm excited. I got this cool patent. That got shared kind of like this, not as much, and got like 80,000 views. People connecting to me. People like, wow, that's neat. Um, it doesn't have to be hard. You just share legitimate good news about yourself. Did you get a job? Share it. Did you get promoted? Share it. Did you ship a project? Share it. Did you buy a car? Share it. Like people, here's, this is important. Everyone talks about how news is terrible. Um, COVID is bad. Uh, police brutality and violence is bad. Depending on your opinion. Well, not even depending on your opinion. Politics are bad. The world situation is bad. Fill in the blank. The environment is bad. The people are desperate for good news. Um, and so, uh, if you post a little bit of good news on LinkedIn, it will, it will, go viral because people are so hungry for it. Um, now, the uh, Roxio, you've commented a couple times that you didn't want extra work and your boss is bad. That may be true also. I didn't get to that point on the magic loop. Yes, is abuse possible? If you have a lousy boss, and particularly if you're in a stagnant company where advancement is very hard, and you go ask your boss, if you can help, they will give you work. And if you ask them more, they will give you more work. But they they lack the ability to really reward you very quickly. Or they're jerks and they just are like, this is great. I'm not allowed to enslave employees anymore, but here's one doing it voluntarily. Sounds fantastic. I will treat them like I wish I could treat everyone. Those bosses exist. The answer to that is build your skills and get out. Go somewhere better where you'll be appreciated. And I know I say that a lot, but there are bad bosses. And the best way to reform a bad boss is to quit. That's the, that's the only punishment you have on them. And eventually they will get the message when everyone leaves their team over and over. They will then have more work to do. They will suffer. They will get punished. Pain reforms people. I hate to say it, but it's true. Pain reforms them. So your bad boss will eventually become a better boss or no longer a boss if enough people quit. And if not, unfortunately, they'll be left with the helpless, low self-esteem, low motivation people who can't think of something better to do. And that's sad, but you don't have to be that person. <sighs> okay, we've had a few rants tonight. I didn't call any of them rants, but we've had a few. All right, it's time for the next question. Hmm, that's annoying. The questions are showing up over top of the overlay, which I'm sure has been going on all night, but it still annoys me in this scene. So let's go back to this one where it doesn't happen. Next question, because I answered that one, it's done. We'll do a couple more and we'll call it a night. It's been a good night. Um, do you think LinkedIn will evolve in the upcoming one to two years as the primary platform like Instagram, Twitter for advertising exposure? I have no idea. 
That's a Devin Nash question. What I have wondered is, will LinkedIn be superseded by something? Um, will something else rise? Social networks like this are pretty sticky. And so as long as it's meeting the goals, I'm not sure it will either evolve or um, it will either evolve or uh, move up, uh, be superseded, but it could be. Um, LinkedIn is not that good. It's simply better than everything else. That's my basic opinion about LinkedIn. Uh, there's no other tool like it right now. You can do this same building though. Um, I would say Instagram is a way to build somewhat of this as is Twitter. If you're really, if you love Twitter, um, you can do some of this by creating a, a tweet following and saying really intelligent things um, that or really funny or really whatever. Uh, but LinkedIn is the default tool. And I don't know if it will be, I, I don't think it will replace Instagram and Twitter. Uh, next question is a whole paragraph. We'll answer it real quick and then we'll see how many more we're going to do. So we're going to enter the speed run. Um, do you think that there are different types of qualifications that engineers or STEM majors should specifically have? For example, if you always hear that you're a video editor, then it's a really good idea to show some of your work off. The point being, should I do anything in specific to help distinguish myself as an engineer or STEM major? Sure. Get an internship. And if you haven't gotten an internship yet, do a public project. Do a hackathon. Do a competition be a part of a team, a prize competition. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. Volunteer somewhere in your field. Work in the lab. Do something that shows you, A, that you have ambition and you put in effort, and B, that you're working in your field. Um, we were looking at this uh, LinkedIn profile earlier. I kind of bagged on Nick's profile. Uh, no, that wasn't him, actually. I did bag on Nick's profile a little bit, but we'll do this one. Um Still someone at school, but clean room assistant at the ASU Nanofab. Here's someone who's interning, who's working while in school. Do this kind of stuff. Look, becoming a lab assistant, I don't want to underrate it. It takes work, but it is also very possible to do. This is not something that like, oh, hey, you know, the qualifications and competition to become a lab assistant are breathtaking. That's not true. Now, maybe at the nanofab and in this particular case, I'm not insulting joining here. It's, um, all right, I give up. Dota, what's the correct, correct pronunciation of your name? Is it Johnny, Joni, something else because you're Finnish? What is it? Give me phonetics in, in American because I don't like to mangle people's names. Um, Anyway, get yourself work. Show show that you can do something. Volunteer. Yes, American. All right. Um, we're going to go back here, finish off questions. That one was easy. Next, next question. Okay, we're down to the, like the one vote question, so we're just going to call it here soon. Would you recommend the applying of the magic loop for all your levels of management, at least up to VP. Essentially, I'm asking if it's okay for your director and VP to ask them what you can do to help them, etc. Yes. However, thank you for asking this. I meant to cover this in my earlier video part. So hopefully, I'll stand back up um, and we can put it in the video through the magic of editing. There is an upgrade to the magic loop, particularly if you are more of a leader, that you should do you can actually figure out what needs to be done all by yourself. So as opposed to going to your boss and saying, how can I help? You can go to your boss and say, hey, I noticed we're behind on the Acme project. And I noticed that we're usually behind on projects because when we do project planning, we forget to account for vacation. So I went ahead and thought of a system we could use to track vacation. How about I implement that? Would that help? Now you're doing the work to bring the proposal of the help you want to give. And all you're looking for is input and approval. Ah, but you can upgrade this even further. As you earn trust and you have a good relationship with your boss, 
You take it to the next level and you say, I noticed this vacation problem, blah, 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 everything I just said. So I fixed it. I wanted to let you know that I've implemented this new way to track vacation plans so we won't be surprised by people's vacations and we'll stop being late on projects like we are with the Acme project. So I fixed that for us. Just wanted to let you know. Now, again, bosses are lazy. They're busy. They're stressed. It's great that you offered to help me and ask how, how you could help. That makes me think. It's better that you come to me with a proposal and say, I have an idea. What do you think? Because that's easier for me. I can answer the question, what do I think, quicker and easier than the question, figure out something for me to do that's useful. Ah, but even better, you come to me and say, hey, boss, you didn't do jack shit. You sat in your office. I made things better. I just wanted to let you know. Now, you don't want to be doing that for every little tiny thing you do because Basically, I'll get sick of it and you'll seem like a suck up. But the ways to upgrade the magic loop are figure it out yourself and do it yourself. Now, you might ask, well, how do I do that? Well, you're going to have to develop insight into both what your boss and your company care, what your boss cares about and what your company cares about. But you can do that with practice. A, sometimes things are obvious. B, as you ask your boss, your boss will have a pattern to the help they want. So you can learn what are they typically stressed about and start looking for those things. Remember I said bosses don't notice everything. So if you're bringing things to their attention and saying, I noticed this and here's what I propose to do about it, you look, magic word here, proactive. Now again, we had the person earlier who doesn't want to do any extra work. They want to sit and be a bump on the log because they don't want to do extra work. They don't want to be given extra work. And then here you are coming up and not only asking to do extra work, but actually giving me suggestions or giving me magical solutions I did nothing to come up with. This is fantastic. And again, when it comes to be promotion, raise, opportunity, whatever time, who am I going to look to help, right? I'm going to be interested in helping those people who are doing the most for me. So super simple. And that was a great question. Yes, you should absolutely apply the magic loop. The more senior you are, though, the more proactive and inventive on your own you're supposed to be. Um, and so just you're going to have to be better. Ah, I can't type tonight. There's the discord link. Um, you're going to have to be better at figuring it out yourself. And that's okay. That's one of the other skills I'm looking for is I'm looking to train you. When you bring me an idea and you say, I think we should do this. I like the fact you're doing that. And I'm willing to train you and say, well, that's not bad. Here's three ways to make it better. And then if you come back to me the next time and I only have one idea to make it better. And the next time you come back with another project and I have no ideas to make it better. What do I learn? Hey, Fred's no longer dead. Fred's actually pretty good at figuring out what needs to be done and doing it. Fred is, another magic word, autonomous. So Fred went from being proactive to being autonomous. I love this because what does autonomous mean to me? It means I don't have to do anything and good things happen. Well, who doesn't want that on their team? Remember, that little tiny piece of moi that's still selfish loves proactive autonomous people so be that and i think that's a good enough set of questions there's a few others with one vote oh a couple people went in and voted um we'll answer one more last one does the amount of hours you put in the high level of your work product and the an application of magic loop truly equal the sheer speed at which you move the ladder yes modulo oh thank you donve for the bits um appreciate you cheering uh, product I near and dear to my heart because I worked on the bits team. Um, yes, with one caveat. The one caveat is what type of company are you working at? If you're working at a company that doesn't have very much opportunity for you to move up, then they may, you may not, um, if your company is not growing, if basically they have to wait until someone else gets fired, quits, or dies, you can get gated on that. So if you're at a high growth company or a startup where there's always more opportunity, you can shoot up levels. Um, 
in this way. And so there have been times in my career, particularly at startups, where I was promoted one, two, three times in the course of one, two, three years, and where my total compensation doubled um, in just a year or two. Now, Awesome wants to know, what about larger companies? Larger companies can be static and slow growth and tenure-based. You can have a company, let's take something like the post office. The post office is mostly interested in your tenure. How long have you been there? And so they're not interested in your ability and there's very little way to distinguish yourself. You delivered mail, great, everybody delivered mail. You delivered it more, well, how do we tell? But John over there, he's been with us 63 years. He's next in line for promotion. You're not gonna move up fast in those circumstances. Otherwise, big companies, Amazon's a huge company, like a million employees, but you can move up very fast at Amazon um, because you can move teams and move to where the high growth is happening. So people leave older stagnant teams at Amazon all the time for faster dynamic teams. And you should totally do that. It is you, it's your career, as I say many times, you have to manage it. But the fundamental point of this question is, does the amount of hours you put in, the quality of your product, and the application of the magic loop equal the speed you can move up the ladder? Yes, if you're in a dynamic work environment, one with growth, and you have a decent boss. And if you don't have those things, go get those things. And that sounds, oh, well, how, Ethan, I get this all the time. How can you just say, go do, get it? Well, I'm telling you to do more work. I'm telling you to take charge of your own career. Part of that is getting into a good work situation. And yes, that may take work too. But once you're there, you're set. All right. Mm. You know, Awesome said increase your skill set. I considered that to be high level of your work product, but you're right, quality and skills are different. I, I was combining them. The high level of your work product is both how good the work you do is and how many different types or what complexity of work you can do. It's true that if you're only good, doesn't matter how good you are, if you're only good at the base level task of going to the mail room, to get the mail for the day or whatever, going down to get the lunch cart in a company that is still in an office and has a lunch cart, and that's all you can do and you never add another skill, you also won't move up. But uh, I'm not saying jack of all trades, master of none. In fact, I'm saying the reverse. You wanna be master of one or two highly valued trades and um, that's much more valuable. Uh, and in fact, your guest, uh, John Coyle, that's what he's going to talk about when he's here. He's going to talk about doubling down on your strengths. So, all right. Uh, and somebody's saying, yeah, a year is not much. Um, unfortunately, um, so Suquery 2, uh, you work at a tech company like Amazon. Remember, okay, this is another lesson. You may think you're ready for promotion. Um, uh, you may think you're ready for promotion, but remember, no one ever thinks they're ready for promotion faster than you. Meaning, um, most people, um, they, here's how I explain it. If you have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse, whatever, you quickly notice if there's something you were expecting them to do for you and they didn't do it. But when you do something for them, sometimes they don't notice. And the point is, when you do something for your boss or something that demonstrates you're capable of doing something, whatever it is, uh, honey, can you please not put your socks on the floor? Put them in the hamper, a like stereotypical complaint. Well, maybe you do put them in the hamper, but they don't notice because they consider that normal. Or maybe they notice, oh, Ethan finally put his socks in the hamper. I wonder if he'll do it again tomorrow. They're looking to see a pattern. My point is you notice every single thing you do right, that you put in extra effort to do right, 
and you evaluate how incredibly right it is, how super big of you it was to do it, and you pat yourself on the back till you break your arm because that's human nature. The other person is not so eager to see it the way you do. And so I can tell you from my own experience and others, no one thinks they're ready for, you're ready for promotion faster than you do. We are super sure that we're ready to move up. So bottom line, I'm not saying that you're not able to be promoted. You might be able to be promoted. It might be that your company is slow or has some level of tenure. All those things could be true. But just remember, no one has a higher opinion of all the great things you've done or a more perfect memory than you. Remember earlier I said, surprise news, your boss has no idea what you're doing. Why? Why is that? Why is it your boss has no idea what you're doing? It's because they have tons of shit they're doing. And a tiny bit of their job is figure out what you're doing and hope you're doing it pretty well. They have 10 other people or a thousand, but 10 other people to worry about and themselves. And they probably have a naggy spouse or a dying pet or a broken down car. They have worries out the yin yang. Tracking every little good thing you do to know exactly the day. Oh my God, you're ready to promote. How could I be slow? I can't miss today. It's Tuesday. I've got to get it done tomorrow. They're not thinking that way. They're thinking, well, he's moving along six months, 12 months. We'll see. It's not because they're mean. They're actually motivated, kind of, but they have 10 or 100 people to look after and you're one of them. So... You can aid that process by being engaged with them. Um, But just remember, no one has a higher opinion of when you're ready to be promoted than you. And so with that, I'm going to call an end to the show. I'm going to thank everybody who's been here. I hope to do a show Friday morning. We'll see if that works out. Sooner or later, John agreed to come on the show. So we will have our Olympic speed skater on the show. Turn fast, go left. We will have a show Monday as well. The end screen will have that. I appreciate everyone who subbed, cheered with bits, followed, shared the stream with others. I think we give good advice here, help us grow the community. I appreciate everyone who drops by in Discord, shares their resume, helps each other out. And I love when you all share your success stories in the Discord channel so that other people and I can see that it's working. can see that we're helping you. And with that, I'm going to wish you all cheers and good night.